now we are ready to install Proxmox virtual environment in the hardware. So here the bootable USB disk is available, which I can insert into any hardware to do the installation. And here I'm installing this on Zima board and I'll be simply inserting this keyboard, which is connected to this. And of course you need the network. Uh, if the network is not available, you can do that later. For installation, it is not required and it is already connected to my screen. So let me show you now how we can do the installation. So let me reboot this first. So here you can see it's Zima board. Once you escape, you will be logged into the BIOS. Of course, uh, going into BIOS is not necessary, but it's always a good idea to first of all, look at your hardware. So on main screen, you can see, of course, the uh, basic configuration of your uh, hardware and in advanced, only what I need to show you is the CPU configuration. And in CPU configuration, you can see here VTD, that has to be enabled. VTD or VTX flag, these has to be enabled. Everything else is fine. So what we are going to do now, we are going to check the boot order here. So first boot option, I will go here to the option one and I'll be choosing USB flash disk here. And then MMC, it is not recommended to install on the built-in MMC of Zima board. Of course, you need to choose any other hard disk for this. So I will be installing it on Samsung. So Samsung is here. This is the disk which is connected to this. So right now, everything is fine here. So depending upon your hardware, you have to accordingly uh, make sure that your CPU configuration is VTX and VTD is enabled. These two flags has to be enabled. And now I will be simply saving the configuration and exit. Of course, in all the servers, this particular option is already by default enabled. So now Zima board is starting installation of Proxmox will begin now. Here you go. So you have three options here, either to use the Proxmox VE graphical or terminal or advanced. So advanced is in case you want to recover the Proxmox if the Proxmox has crashed. So we'll be simply going with the terminal UI. Of course, it's it all depends on you. Uh, both the options are fine, but I usually go with the terminal UI uh, just to get that installation feeling. So you can see here Proxmox VE9 is being installed right now. So let's wait for this bootable media is being loaded. All right. So your screen might flicker for some time, so you don't need to worry about it. And here it is now also looking at the network. So here you go. First of all, a license agreement, of course, Proxmox VE is an open source, uh, which is built on Debian. Debian is again open source. We agree. Here is the target hard disk. So as I mentioned that uh, I'm not recommending you to install it on MMC and minimum hard disk storage required is 32 GB. So I will be choosing from here SSD, which is connected to this, which is 256 GB. If you have two hard disks of the same size or two SSDs of the same size, I will recommend you to use two for the installation because if one will crash, another will be available. So here I'm installing it only on one single disk. Of course, recommended to use two disks and then we can have the mirroring of that so that uh, if one disk fails, another will take care of this. Here, I'll be choosing the SSD, which is 256 GB. Of course, in advanced options, you can choose the swap size and maximum boot size and so on. Otherwise, I will be leaving it default so it will automatically choose the uh, process. So here, the file system. So first is ext4. For a standard installation, I have already explained what is ext4 and what is uh, XFS. And if you are installing it on only one disk, then you must choose one of these two options. So default option is ext4 and I'll recommend you do that. Now ZFS is in fact for the uh, multiple disks. If you are having two disks, uh, you can go with RAID 0. But the problem is that if one of the disks will fail, uh, the entire data will be lost. If your concern is only performance, then you must go with RAID 0. So RAID 1 is recommended. Uh, so if you have two disks, so you will choose RAID 1, which means that the uh, data will be simultaneously written on both the disks. So if one disk will fail, another disk will take care of. So for the installation, uh, we have to go with two disks if you are using it for production environment, because if one SSD will fail, another SSD is there 
uh, RAID 10, it's not RAID 10. RAID 10 is in fact combination of RAID 0 and RAID 1, which means that it will give you the performance also and fault tolerance also. So fault tolerance and performance together is making RAID 10. Then is ZFS Z1, Z2 and Z3. These are similar kind of uh, RAIDs. And then is Butterfuss uh, or BTRFS, uh, which is another file system. Uh, it also has the same RAID 0, RAID 1 and RAID 1, 0. So these all options are available if you have multiple disks for the installation. So I will recommend if you are using two disks, so go with a ZFS uh, RAID 1 or Butterfuss RAID 1. If you have single disks, then you will go with ext4. So now everything is fine here. I will simply tab and press OK. And here it says that target disk is right now. This one, which is Samsung SSD. So it is fine. So country, it is uh, uh, Australia. And those who are available in Australia, of course, you can directly contact me. I will be available to assist you in installation and configuration of Proxmox virtual environment. And we can even set up a data center. So here, location is Australia, Melbourne. And keyboard layout, I will be choosing standard US English. And next. So root password, I will be choosing root password here. Email address, I will be choosing proxmox at syncbricks.com. And next, host name is PVE, but I will be choosing this as zimaboard.syncbricks.com just uh, to make sure that whenever I'm accessing a Proxmox virtual environment, so I know that which particular hardware I'm accessing. And here I'll be choosing the IP address, which is 10.11.12.101, which is what I usually use for the Proxmox. And here, gateway will be. 10.11.12.1 and the DNS server is also 10.11.12.1 which is the open sense on my network and next. So everything is fine here. This is giving you the information that file system ext4 boot disk is dev sda uh, time zone keyboard layout and email address and so on. So I will simply now press install. So it will clean up the boot partitions, root partition and uh, clean up the hard disk and then it will create the partition and then it will start installing. I will be just fast forwarding this and I'll have a coffee till then. Once the installation is completed, I will come back to you. All right, so you can see here that the installation is completed now. So it is automatically now uh, rebooting. All right, so once the installation is completed, you can safely remove the USB flash disk. And then you can simply go back to BIOS setup by pressing the escape, of course, depending upon which hardware you have. So I will go into boot order and you can see here right now the first boot option after removal of the bootable disk, which was here. So I have removed this disk now. And here I have uh, other disks also, of course, available into this. But I'll be choosing the Samsung SSD as the first boot option. I won't be using MMC. MMC has another operating system installed which is uh, pfSense um, but I won't be using that. MMC is now third priority. We can even disable that also so that we don't want the boot from the MMC. So here we'll just simply save the changes and exit. Now it will reboot and it will load the Proxmox virtual environment uh, 9.0 directly from the hard disk and here you go. Let us first of all make sure that it logs in you can see here found volume group pve once you see the login screen then it is safe to switch to the web browser and do the rest of the configuration from there and we can go into the command line also and we can do that from here also so you can see here that proxmox virtual environment is now available so login with root as a login and password whatever you set up if you are familiar with the command line user interface you can of course use that and uh, here I can ping, for example, google.com to make sure I'm connected to the internet. You can see here I'm getting the response, ping 10.11.12.1, which is the uh, gateway IP address. Yes, I'm getting the response. And ping 1.1.1.1, Cloudflare DNS IP address. It is fine. So everything is working fine here. So we won't do anything here. So I'll be switching back to the a web user interface and I'll show you how we can get started with Proxmox virtual environment 9.0 or Proxmox VE9 
we have done the installation on Zima board. Of course, you can use any hardware. Uh, this was just for the tutorial so that you can understand that how the installation has to be done. Uh, you can choose any hardware of your choice. Do the installation first in the RAID 1 configuration, whether it is a ZFS or Butterfuss. So now the installation is completed. Hardware is ready. Now you don't need to be near to the hard hardware. You can just come back to the system where you can access this using the web user interface. Make sure that your hardware is connected to the network and that's it. So let's continue to next video now.